Hey, welcome back. This is intermission here for Collected Shorts. This is an exciting moment here. We're about to talk to the director of that wonderful piece we just saw there, Augustus. Um, and let's talk about it. His name is John Alston. We'll welcome him in just a moment. He had an unusual path to the film festival circuit with this film, Augustus. He was drafted out of Stanford University by the St. Louis Rams in 2006. He played in the NFL for five seasons. Then he retired from professional sports in 2011, started a production company and directed his first short that year. And he wrote and directed his first feature, Red Butterfly, a couple of years after that. He wound up going back to school, getting his MFA in film and television production from the University of Southern California. And he got a job on staff writing and serving as story editor for All American. It's the show on the WB about a high school football player in LA. Um, Augustus has been really well received and we see why. It's been winning awards. It was an official selection in the Diversity at Cannes Short Film Showcase. So with that, John, if you're on the line, I wanna say hello. Thanks so much for stopping by to chat tonight. I think Mr. John Austin is, is getting hooked up, getting ready, getting prepped. Not quite with us yet. Uh, what a series of films, huh? Um, so much to so much to savor there and to think about, and some real local connections, which are interesting. I, I wasn't quite expecting that or realizing that was coming. Um, Augustus, uh, powerful, powerful film. Uh, I am looking forward to asking about this, but I understand he went out and shot this in just a couple of days, and, and there's going to be a story about when and where that happened, um, which should be good. But what a great event to be able to sit here and see shorts that are, have all won awards at St. Louis International Film Festival. And now we're going to be ready to, to say hello to John. Hey, John, how's it going? All right. Sorry about that. Got a chance to unmute. That's how this is. Great. Thank you for having me. Hey, well. thanks for coming by. I really appreciate it. And you're in, you're in demand tonight, right? This isn't your first stop. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I'm very, very fortunate to uh, do a Q&A with some, uh, another group of very talented filmmakers for uh, New, New Filmmakers Los Angeles. It's been a very wonderful experience uh, working with the organization and getting a chance to meet a lot of executives and people in the industry and and uh, people who came to watch our shorts. It's, it's really been a wonderful experience. Are you in Los Angeles presently? I am currently in downtown Los Angeles. Okay. Well, um, so how, how, so this is part of kind of life right now. How has it been releasing and promoting and talking up a film during this pandemic? You know, it's been very interesting. Um, <laughs> I joke in, uh, in some ways uh, about the number of places that I guess this has been, but we've never been as well. You know, we, 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 we've got a festival in Kenya uh, coming up and we've got, we've been shown in Asia, we've been shown in Ireland and the UK and, you know, I mean, we've been all, all over in a lot of ways and it's, it's been really interesting because we, but we can't go, you know, and I think sadly, my, you know, my first film, uh, I premiered in St. Louis um, almost, you know, it'd be six and a half years ago now. And, uh, you know, I was luck fortunate enough to done well at the um, St. Louis Filmmaker Showcase this year and, you know, uh, also doing well at uh, St. Louis International, my favorite festival. You know what I mean? I feel like I have a connection to St. Louis and I feel like I have a relationship with the with the team there and um, I really wanted to be there. Something you know? I heard from another filmmaker just the other day is this past year, it's a bit of a give and take with the festival scene where you don't have the in-person networking and feedback direct in the room from, from the audience you typically get, but people from outside of wherever that festival is are tuning in and watching your stuff. And so you might have people watching Augustus from anywhere in the world. And uh, in a way, your audience gets bigger, even though uh, you're not able to actually be there. Yeah, totally. It is a gift take in that in that sense. Um, I mean, you know, part of the beauty of film, film festivals is getting the chance to meet people uh, in person. Um, you know, I'll give you a, a prime example. Um, my next film uh, that we hope to get made, uh, it's an adaptation of uh, St. Louis Superman, the um, documentary short that was nominated for an Oscar about Bruce Franks Jr. Um, and came through St. Louis uh, as well, um, is going to be workshopped in the Missouri Stories Fellowship. And I met uh, Andrea Sporchik um, when I premiered my film there. Right. And I'll be working with her and her team again 
And, and I think that's just so cool to see when your life can come back around and see the connections that you made to know that that, that mattered. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, this has been, this has been cool. You know, we're getting a chance to chat, you know what I mean? Uh, for even from the distance, I think, I think in the future, there, there is some benefit to what we're doing with the Zooms. You know what I mean? Uh, when you're talking about off times or times that we can't normally make, and I can do this in the, in the comfort of my home, um, there's definitely a benefit. You yeah. Know? And uh, you mentioned you're working on it. St. Louis Superman is was a, a is a documentary short. So adapting that, or is this a narrative a narrative feature that you're putting together? Oh, it, it's Bruce the story. story. It's the story. You know, I've known Bruce for about three years now. I'm going on four years. I know him very well. Learned more about him, writing his story, uh, getting into the mind space of, the, of of who he is as a person. And I'll tell you, he's a very remarkable person. You know what I mean? And 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 trying to to break this down into a narrative that is authentic to, um, you know, some of the things that he, some of his strengths um, and that's reaching across the aisle, that's communication, right? Um, and he is a storyteller as, as well as, a, you know, obviously an activist and politician, but he's entertaining, you know what I mean? Um, and so, you know, that, that's uh, breaking that down. It's a work of two years thus far, but uh, very proud of where we're going with it. Excellent. Well, um when you started your NFL career with the St. Louis Rams, right? I can see the dome right over there. Yeah. Uh, you moved to St. Louis at the time, and I think you lived here during your football career, right? Yeah, I did. I, I kept my place for about 10 years down there, uh, and I was in and out uh, after I got cut and I got picked up by the, um, by the Raiders and went back home to the Bay Area. Um, yeah, you know, so I find it very interesting is that my, my film career was probably more successful in St. Louis than my – football career was, even though I wanted to play for five years. Um, that's just how it is. Sometimes you get into an organization that doesn't fit for you. And then I, I did well with the Raiders, you know, played very well. It's a very good special teams players started about 16 games over there. Um, and, uh, you know, we, like I said, the beauty of it, at least the, my connection with the, the, the industry there, the, the artists and the, and the people, uh, St. Louis is a very special place, a very unique place. I lived in New York, I lived in San Francisco, I lived in Florida. Now I live in Los Angeles. Um, I would say the Midwest, you know, I'm from Louisiana, you know, um, I keep in touch with the people that I, I, I met during my brief time in St. Louis. They're some of my best friends, some of my biggest supporters. Um, and that speaks a lot about the type of people that you could that come out of there. Yeah. Well, John, so you mentioned you, you changed careers in your late twenties, but your interest in filmmaking wasn't just coming out of nowhere, right? As an, as an undergrad at Stanford, I believe you majored in film and media studies the first time through. So can you talk a bit about making that transition from, from football to, to filmmaking? Was that a, an obvious choice for you to make at that point in your life? You know, it's interesting because, you know, I always say, I think as, as children, we kind of have an inclination of what we want to be, what our strengths are, you know what I mean? Uh, and who we are. Uh, it's just that we, what, what narratives are we listening to as we age, right? As we grow up, I, I, I got into a situation when I was younger that uh, I wanted to prove myself as a tough guy. So I got into sports. It was basketball, and then eventually it was football, right? Because um, I used to get made fun of for being a nerd. I used to draw and uh, paint my, my 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 book covers. You know what I mean? This is what I used to do um, as a kid and write. As a matter of fact, there's things that I was just interested in. But you know, uh, where I'm from, um, you get a lot of love for being tough. You know what I mean? And sure. so uh, I said, okay, cool. That's what they do. Let's see what I got. And I, and I had some stuff. And you know that that itch never went away. Uh, I always watched films and, and really liked to absorb them. I like to live in the worlds that they were. I didn't travel a lot as a kid, so this is my way to travel. Some people are like that with books. I was that way with film, right? And so um, one, I did an internship when I was in college at uh, this place called Signature Resources Incorporated in um, Irvine, and my boss. Uh, kind of told me, I mean, he was like, look, you know, I, I may run this place, but I was a liberal arts major at USC, you know, and he's just like, look, you got to expand your mind. And that started giving give me the courage to kind of take that, that route. And I think towards the end of my career in the NFL, um, I did, a, I did a, a month at New York Film Academy just to test the waters. I, I taught myself photography to really start reading books and studying and then just throwing myself out there and trying. And um, truthfully, you know, it just felt right you know what I mean? I, and I finally like gathered enough courage to say, okay, well, let me give this a shot, right? Like, let me do this. And uh, that, 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 I think this is where we're at. I'm not going back. It sounds like you have just create, creativity coming out of every pore here in all, all different places. 
Yeah, I mean, we're trying, dude. It, you know, it's it's one of those things like if you're inclined and you work, right? And then and then at some point you got to be humble and continue to listen to it and then focus in on kind of the things that you want to do and the things that you want to say because it's a very collaborative medium. You meet a lot of different people, right? And and everybody that you need and what we do, especially, you know, this, you need, like everybody you come across, you're going to need them. You know, you're going to need their support. You're going to need them to say yes. You're going to need them to like say you can do this better versus like, oh, you're terrible, go away, right? Um, so you look for that and, you know, this is what, since this is where I'm at, I'm very grateful for the opportunity and even, even us today meeting and speaking and all the help that, uh, Cinema St. Louis has given. Let's talk about Augustus. So obviously there, there's a reveal at the end when we discover where we've been watching the story of Frederick Douglass. Um, could you talk about the, the decision to, to use such a well-known figure in this piece? Well, you know, what's interesting is it, is this was, this was what the first, Thing that I've ever worked on or shot that I didn't, I didn't initiate the ideology or the idea, right? Um, I ended how who was the lead in there and, and, and credited as the writer. He he came to me with a screenplay, and um, he had he had shown it to our producer Quinn Curry, and he had one idea when when when, when gathering towards it. Quinn had a great idea to reveal that later, right? And then when I, the script got to me, we, we we took it to another level on certain things, and we we reshaped some things just to to match my my taste and some of the things that I wanted to kind of see to get out of that. And um, it was a collaboration in that sense. And so I thought that when that got to me, I thought that that reveal at the end was brilliant. You know, I thought it was really great. And, you know, uh, people can war war wonder if it's Frederick Douglass cool, is this something to talk about? But then you, you see last year in 2020, we're still tearing down the statues because of a speech that they gave uh, pre-Civil War, you know, about, about uh, you know, what is the 4th of July to, to a slave and, uh, or to the black, or to a black man. And, and, um, I thought that was really fascinating, you know, to, to see and understand that, that these narratives and these stories that were that what that came about years and years and years ago are still relevant today and then and, and how they impact us today. You mentioned his famous speech, um, what what to the slave is the Fourth of July. Yep. Do I understand that you shot this film over Fourth of July weekend? Yeah, we did shoot this film over Fourth of July weekend. I had a break from uh, All American at the time and then uh, I was, we just went out there um, and, 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 and got it going. You know, we only had three and a half days to shoot 18 pages of a period piece that, that blended the time now and we didn't sleep and we put, we put all our work and effort and, and hearts into this thing. And I think we got some magic. We found some magic in it. And um, I think being in Richmond, being in Petersburg where they were shooting the good Lord bird and Harriet had just shot there and, and, and um, Lincoln had shot there beforehand and the history, you could feel it. You know, in the was not in Richmond and and where? Petersburg, 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 Virginia. Okay. And and um, just kind of getting a chance to feel all of that, I, we just it just felt very special at the time. I mean, shooting this material on Independence Day uh, must have added a whole different level of, of resonance to the experience. Well, yeah, I, I I would I would have to agree with that, right? When we um. We think about and we debate what does it mean to be an American? What does it mean to be a patriot? You know, my first production company when I started this was called Dream America Pictures. You know what I mean? Um, and, and looking at the beauty of what our country is, right? And understanding that um, democracy is earned uh, and, and our constitution is a living, breathing entity, right? And for its flaws, it still got a lot of things right because that ideology of that American dream is what actually keeps the, the beating heart of, of a democracy going in the United States of America, even though you would call it a republic per se, if you were going specific. But the way that we operate is it, it, we, we have strong democratic idea, ideologies and ideals. And I think that a lot of the people who would consider themselves disparaged in so many ways are ones who really, really cling to that and, and, and push continue to push to make America that utopia that I believe our founding fathers um, believed in and, and, and sought for when they when they were drafting the Constitution. And if I think if this film had just been of the period material, it still would have been a gorgeously shot, very emotionally resonant piece, but it sort of takes a whole other thematic level with the, the commingling of, of the present and the past, right. Right? particularly uh, early in the film when we have a contemporary setting and we're introduced to characters we're about to see in the 1840s in this in this contemporary parking lot that commingling of past and present was that always a piece of this material as you developed it oh absolutely uh that was that, that was kind of found some of the founding pieces of it to be honest with you 
Um, look, I think I think uh, audiences uh, tend to claim that they've had a bit of a fatigue with you know slave type material or 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 um, period pieces and things of that nature, and so we saw to look to look at the genre and say okay, how can we subvert it with magical realism and surrealism and dreams and the future, right? And then how can we anchor that into you know the 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 the, the strong techniques of, of storytelling that will lead for empathy for our protagonist and that's and that's through everything has to be through his point of view right yeah. you know what i mean like let's make this story personal like you know obviously we're alluding to sandra bland and we're alluding to trayvon martin and things of that nature but it's got to be through his vision who what does he have to lose why does he care right it's his son you know like lewis lewis is when you when you're creating that alicor that juxtaposition right like if imagine if frederick douglas were to witness some of the things that we've witnessed today. What would he say? How would he feel? How would that incept him? And that's that's the that's the very uh, you know inception of the the idea behind this film, right? And then we have to say, okay, well, sure, but uh, witnessing the death of someone else, especially as brutal a time that he's lived in, that's one thing, and it caused him to do the things he did already. But what is the next step if it's his own child, right? Because in some in so many ways, we are all the children of the abolitionists, right? Were those Frederick Douglass's words at the end there? No, these were ours. Okay. Yeah, these these were our words um, that we workshopped and rehearsed and we built and um, really to match what we're doing here. But it, but it was obviously inspired by the things that he had said. Sure. Well, you're interfacing with people through screens a lot of the time. But what what kind of responses have you gotten from audiences who've seen this picture? You know, it's been very interesting because we, you know, we made this as an independent project. It didn't go through a lab. I didn't, I didn't take it through my grad school program um, because I left it early, and this was, this was sort of going to operate as my thesis. Um, but we have shown in more than fifty plus festivals. We've won quite a few awards. Um, I've gotten quite a bit of press off of it to be able to speak in, in major publications. Um, and so I think that the response was quite great, um, especially when people get a chance to actually absorb it you know what i mean and take it in and see you know i mean people really love obviously the cinematography and the production values and things like that i i think the acting is great and i i think kind of the magic of the weave my absolute favorite moment of the film um is when augustus is running through the fields and there's a really beautiful cut and we shoot we, we use the sun and the sunlight and the next frame is um, Augustus's mother and the men who were holding him up, holding her up at the beginning of the film. And they're in this beautiful light. It's actually one of our posters. And that's just magic, you know? That's just like, this came about. It rained that day, you know? And the skies cleared and we just had got this really, really beautiful moment. The framing is perfect. And it's that when you see those kind of things come together, you're just kind of like, yeah, I'm supposed to be here, I'm supposed to do that, so. Yeah, um, this, I mean, this is some gorgeous light throughout throughout the throughout the film and in light represents hope mm -hmm. yeah so we find that that stuff is very even even at the, the final scene where um augustus is giving his speech he's speaking out um ironically <laughs> it speaks to the the time that same location is the same location as the dungeon scene with the light that comes through it's the same house don't ask me how they have a why they got a dungeon right <laughs> You know, they have this beautiful mansion at the same time. They just got it, right? Um, and we shot those the same day and we flipped it the way that we were going to shoot that. So that last scene feels like day, you know, uh, but it was nighttime and we shot it for day. This was not a huge budget production, but we had a great team, a great gaffer, Justin T. Davis. He's phenomenal. He worked on um, Black Klansman. Um, he, I mean, he's really great. And then our cinematographer, Matt Edwards, who was a Stanford USC guy like myself, is just phenomenal. He's doing two, tele two television shows right now. You know, he's just a, just a great uh, director of photography. And um, I, it was just imperative that that, that that moment felt like a new day. It feels like a Sunday, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. right? So it feels like we're going, it's church. Um, the anticipation in the, in the speech and, and, and something going through. and only because you want the film to re be resonant of that. You want that, that, that theme of hope to come through because it, it just says, hey, look, there is a reward to standing on your truth. You know what I mean? John, thanks for the work. Thanks for sharing it with us. Thanks for chatting with us tonight. Jeremy, it's, a, it's an honor, you know what I mean? Uh, that you're even speaking with me, asking and going through um, the work. I, I, I look forward to bringing St. Louis something else very special very soon. 
We definitely um, want to see it. We can do more of that. Um, you know, we're going to be building out St. Louis, man. We're going to bring back Smriti and, um, and, and, and Sammy and uh, a hell, hell of a team to tell not only Bruce's story, but the story of the people who were on the ground and, and, and St. Louis's story. You know what I mean? Um, I believe that St. Louis is a very beautiful, unique place that you can pull from both sides and every side really to, to, to show you what unity is and it being in the middle of the country and being the gateway. I, I'll call it the gateway to unification. So um, that is my goal. Um, and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Thank you so much, Tom. Yeah, I appreciate Good it. Evening. Thank you. Don Alston, director of Augustus. And we're gonna show some more films. I believe we have four more. I'm just gonna take a quick look over here, folks. Settle back into your chair. We have RAS, To the Dusty Sea, Black Goat, and Josiah coming up. So please settle in, dim the lights, pop the corn, and enjoy. <laughs> 